Okay, today I'm testing the installation of the uh, main gear and the gear doors on this F-18. And I just programmed this air power door sequencer. And it's also set at uh, 50 pounds uh, fail-safe. So the gear is up now. And if I sequence the transmitter, now it's down. You can see how much, how much it used. Going back up. It doesn't use too much per cycle. Now this is just the main gear and the gear doors. I have separately, I'll test the front. I have some uh, restrictors in the lines. These are uh, these little units right here. This prevents the gear and the doors from slamming, especially when they close it. That can tend to damage the structure. So uh, I'll show you what the gears look like going up and down. Okay, this is a cycle. Of course, the gears are already down, so I'll cycle them up. and down uh, they work nice and scale like with the restrictors in the line plus they don't slam and that is a good thing slamming uh, eventually doesn't do any mechanical stuff any good cycle them again and down On this plane, they're trailing link type of landing gear, so when the plane is on the ground and loaded, they're actually uh, loaded against the spring. So they're going to be like that. Uh, just the design of the landing gear. Okay, going back up. Another thing I do on in installation of all air operated devices is do a leak check of the cylinders and all the fittings. And there is a lot of uh, commercially available leak check fluid. This happens to be the one I use. Very simple to do. Basically, you just take the, uh, the little uh, test tube here and put it on the, on the fittings. I've already done this, so there's no leaks here, but if there was a leak, you get massive bubbles. So I do this to all the cylinders, and all every joint, every T-joint, every joint, including the joints on the, on the control unit. In this case, there were no leaks, which is good. Uh, another easy way to test, since there's a digital gauge on this unit, is just fill it up with air, let it sit for like half an hour, and see how much it comes down. In this case, starting at 100, uh, after a half an hour, this thing lost 2 PSI, and that's really nothing. That's, you know, not, you know, essentially that's such a tiny leak rate. Uh, it isn't even worth worrying about. So now we'll go on to the front gear. Okay, we're back with the nose gear, same setup uh, with the uh, controller. So it's down now, we'll go through an up cycle. And a down cycle. The, uh, the current time is three second delay between uh, down and uh, in the doors and up in the doors. Closing. Now I'm going to do another test by taking out one of the restrictors and so the speed should approximately double. Right now there's one restrictor in the up line and the down line. Now we'll see what happens. Okay this is with uh, one restrictor removed. It's going to be faster.
Yeah, it's almost too fast. Coming up. Now I'm going to put the restrictions on the on the other side. That was on the downside. I'll put them on the upside and see if it makes any difference. Okay, one restrictor on the opposite side. Up. Down. Yeah, it still slams a little bit. Uh, we'll see what happens when uh, it's all hooked up. So they're all operating together, and which uh, restrictor set we'll use. But that's the effect the restrictor has. Okay, the other test I always do on all electrical components is do a, uh, a current check. And uh, now this thing is drawn 620 milliamps just sitting there being turned on. It's only running off a uh, 4.8 volt battery pack, which is, it's, it's down a little bit, but that's a lot of milliamps. Let's see if it changes when I cycle. 660 milliamps, 690 milliamps. So inside your plane, no matter what that thing is doing, up or down, uh, it's drawn 600 milliamps. So, uh, you know, you need a good set of batteries. Because as soon as you turn your plane on, that's how much current this draws. This is an air power sequencer. Uh, just some extra information.